Listen, you can't lift that weight. At some point in your life, you're going to die. You are sick. Your marriage has problems. You're dropping the ball at certain aspects of your job or as a father or as a husband. You've made promises to yourself that you haven't kept. That's reality. And to tell yourself that failure is not an option is to consistently live in a state of denying reality. It's delusional by definition. My club's for closers. So something I do want to talk, and I've talked about this before, but I think it's more relevant than ever, is this mantra that I hear a lot, and I think it's incredible, I hate to use the word toxic now, these terms have been co-opted, but it really is toxic, the idea that failure is not an option. You hear that a lot, failure is not an option. Um, well, right now this is an example, we're talking about this. We're fighting Facebook, Disney, ABC, the Academy, I don't even know if they are Disney, ABC. Uh, internal battles, of course, we have battles with, well-known battles with YouTube. This has been going on for a long time, and it is, I wanna say, sometimes it feels insurmountable, uh, and I'll come back to this. Sometimes, of course, I want to pack up and go home. Uh, it has been a very, very trying week. And, as you know, you know, Hopper's been sick. He's been doing very well. Thank you so much for your comments. Uh, I'm not at the top of my health game right now. But let me just tell you something. Um, failure is absolutely an option. I know that. I've talked about this a lot, but I'd like to put a finer point on it. Um, a good example, recently I was watching television. And I saw a commercial that mentioned uh, Huntsville, Alabama, you know, Rocket City, USA. And the man in the commercial was talking about how failure, failure was not an option. Now, here's the thing. I understand where he's coming from. I'm not saying that rocket scientists, NASA, whoever this guy was, is being dishonest. He's effectively trying to express the importance of the task and the severity of the failure they're in. Okay, someone could die. Something could blow up. I appreciate the accountability being expressed in the sentiment. So do not get mad. Don't say you're attacking NASA. That's not what I'm doing here. But I disagree with the phrase. And I think it's one we need to do away with. I certainly would encourage you to do away with it in your personal life. Mainly because I see so many people use it as a personal mantra. Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. Kind of like an I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. But I've talked about this before. My good friend Chael has talked about this before. Failure is always an option. In fact, it's often the easiest and most readily available option. That doesn't mean that the consequences are easy or desirable. But the action of failing is always every step of the way. It's more apparent to me now than ever. As we talk about on this show, your guiding light above all else, I hate this sounds cheesy, but it needs to be truth. And so I don't think that ever denying reality is the most productive route. I just don't believe it. I know that it's been helpful uh, for me, and I think it would behoove many of you to consider dropping the mindset for a more accurate one. Failure is always an option. Don't tell yourself it's not. If you tell yourself it's not, you're effectively denying this huge, this ribbon, this milky way, this, this cosmic belt of reality. Sometimes it's the biggest cosmic belt of reality in your path. Certainly the most looming. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're driving down a freeway. There's a major roadblock. Let's say a five car pileup. Does it help you to say there's no pileup? It's not even on the table. Or is it more productive to see the pileup, to acknowledge it, and to refuse to allow it to impede your progress? See, the former mindset, that of telling yourself that there is no roadblock, failure's not an option, it leads to what? What does it lead to? riding straight into that roadblock. The latter, acknowledging it, seeing the roadblock, including this data, incorporating the information into your reality, largely because it is reality, I'll come back to that in a second, living your truth, uh, would be more productive, it would lead to a solution. You know it's there, but you don't want to end up in that roadblock, so you're more likely to take a different route, to recalibrate, to succeed. Why? Do we tell ourselves this, that failure is not an option? Why do we consistently lie to ourselves? And why has it been accepted as though it's, and I see it in the Christian community as well as this sort of self-help guru community. Which is more productive? Okay, let's just look at this from a pragmatic point of view. The, the failure is not an option mantra, or let's just say, let's, we switched it to failure is disallowable. I'd like to see more people saying failure is disallowable as opposed to lying to themselves saying that failure is not an option. It may sound trivial, but one is a soundbite and one is a way of life. One is a mantra, okay, that sounds good on daytime talk shows, it sells self-help books. The other is a very non-sexy but necessary mindset to deal with your own shortcomings. Most importantly, one is dishonest and one is truthful. I'd say it's honestly, it's even more severe than, uh, than that in that one is dishonest in arguably the most destructive way possible, and that it's the kind of dishonesty in which you lie to yourself. Oh, in your marriage, failure's not an option. Failure's not an option. In your work, failure's not an option. Failure's not an option. In your physical training, failure's not an option. Failure's not an option. Only to find yourself at some point when you've been living with this mantra, 
I don't know, with a broken marriage, possibly a divorce, losing your job, or in the most literal sense, physical harm, finding yourself under a barbell. By the way, I, I don't know what's happened with my wrist. It's not the power glove. With, uh, with the boy from Boy Meets World, the brother, the old Fred Wizard. Savage. Wizard. That's what it is. It's so bad. And by the way, that's why I believe that physical training is so important. A lot of people say, oh, you're a meathead. No. Uh, sometimes experiencing the most literal strain possible tells you a lot about yourself, a lot about your place in this world and how you interact with it. So do me a favor. We do this every week, and often you, you, you tweet me or you send me messages, and it ends up on uh, the Mug Club Life Advice segment. Do me a favor. Run this experiment. Find out what your maximal strength is. It, how much you can squat, deadlift, hell, I, I don't care how many pull-ups you can do, okay? This is just an experiment. I'm not saying that how many pull-ups you can do determines your marital quality. But just find something that measures your maximal strength. Write it down, okay? Perform it once. Now, I want you to add 15%. Doesn't seem like a ton, right? Tell yourself failure is not an option. Repeat it as many times as necessary. Listen to, your, listen to your amp up music, get Slayer going. I don't know what you listen to nowadays. I don't know if Linkin Park is still a thing. That's what pissed me off in high school. Get yourself to peak by any means possible and try it. Pause this right now, try it, add 15%. Did you succeed? See, that's why the mantra of failure is not an option is so harmful. Because amidst all of this lying to yourself, all the while these roadblocks keep piling up. You will come to that roadblock. You will come to that pileup. It's there. It's always there. But if you acknowledge it, if you're honest with yourself, you can prepare for it. And you can choose, not always, but often to disallow failure. So I want you to take that same experiment, okay? Find out your maximal strength, same as before. Could be a squat, could be even a number of pull-ups. It just has to be consistent with what you did before, okay? Now, instead of performing it and then adding 15% and amping yourself up with failure is not an option, I want you to take a different tack. I want you to acknowledge that that is your limitation that going past it will lead to failure. Keep that in the back of your mind, okay? But don't reach it. Don't max out. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to not perform to failure, but to chart a course to improve it. For example, let's say your max, maximum squat is 300 pounds. Consistently do less. Call it 275 pounds, but gradually add, every time you go into the gym, five pounds. Work hard, work hard, work diligently, but not to failure. If you can do 15 pull-ups, only do 12 or 13, but consistently and add one rep. Write it down. And then I want you to come back and note when you surpass your previous limit. I guarantee you, this is a promise, okay? Not an empty promise. I guarantee you that using that method, you will surpass it. And you'll probably be surprised by how quickly it happens. Now, this experiment here, it's not about lifting weights. It's to show you that one way of doing things, the failure is not an option, doesn't work. You can try and move that weight, shove and heave and strain all you want. You will be no closer, 0% closer to achieving growth than you were when you started. The other, while not sexy, very workmanlike, it's not a show horse, it's a Clydesdale, will lead to breakthrough. The breakthrough you were seeking in the first place. It's a great irony in life that these triumphant, these grandiose ways that we try to achieve our breakthroughs, they're usually the ones that keep us from achieving them. Because it's the preparation that matters. It's the in-betweens, like I've talked about. It's the unsexy measures we take when no one is watching, when the excitement's worn off, and failure is always an option in the back of our mind. See, one, the failure is not an option is effectively uh, the false mantra of living your truth. That's why I think I hate it so much. Whereas the decision to acknowledge failure as an option, but disallowing it to determine your long-term circumstances is the equivalent to living in the truth. I don't think there's anything sillier than saying this, I'm speaking my truth. That's a hedge to say, you could be a liar. That's what you could be saying. Sorry, Carter Blackguard has to hit the, the censor button. I'm a little pissed off this week. I don't really care. I've let it fly. I'll, I'll reset. I'll recalibrate next week because I realize failure with my vocabulary is an option. But what does living your truth mean? If you're not living in the truth, there is absolute truth. And sometimes your truth and the truth are incongruent. As a matter of fact, I'd wager more often than not, because often the truth is really uncomfortable. But guess what? The truth is always there. It's always there. And if your truth isn't the truth, it's going to hit you like a brick in the face. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. Sooner or later, the truth is coming from you. I say from you or for you. I don't care. Live life without limits. That's another bumper sticker that I saw. I'm sorry, I'm going going off course. <laughs> Live life without limits. Someone has this, this bumper sticker showing like they were climbing on a summit. What the hell does that mean? What does that mean? The truth is you have limits. I'm a rock. No, you're a human and you're breakable. We all are. 
Where people lie to themselves when they're sick. How many times do you know these people, the positive speaking bullcrap? I understand you don't want to be a negative Nancy, but you know, no, <laughs> I'm not sick. I don't get sick. I'm gonna speak over myself, I'm not sick, and they cough up a lung. Listen, you can't lift that weight. At some point in your life, you're going to die. You are sick. Your marriage has problems. You're dropping the ball at certain aspects of your job or as a father or as a husband. You've made promises to yourself that you haven't kept. That's reality. And to tell yourself that failure is not an option is to consistently live in a state of denying reality. It's delusional by definition. Right now, to give you an idea, to tie this back into us, and I don't want this to just be about me, we were hit with four copyright claims in the same day on the same show to try and suppress it. Three have been defeated. They're just biding their time on the fourth, hoping that the Oscars will no longer be relevant and that you don't watch it when it's available. Please prove them wrong. We're currently preparing for an epic legal war with Facebook. One that will test the integrity and fortitude, not only of myself, but everyone on this team. Also you. How long will you stick it out? How long will you support us? This week, we had to miss three shows to fight these battles. Believe me, that wasn't fun for us. There are going to be a few more weeks like that if this goes to court. How long are you in? When the dust has settled, the excitement of the initial war, the battle cry has died out. When we're in the trenches, rained on, covered in dirt, waiting. Are you still there? Because failure is always an option. I have to be honest with myself. Right now, failure is the most easy, readily available option. I'm not a rock. I'm not a man without limits. I'm a very limited man who is fallible and breakable. It'd be a lot easier to fail right now because rather than continuing, rather than reinvesting and creating for the unheard majority of Americans, you, the international fans out there, I know we have a lot of Canadian Greek Orthodox, Pantelis just ta- told me this, uh, I could collect my marbles that I've gained thus far right now and go home. Even more, I'm at a point right now where I know that, the f- that failure of this program, of this movement, of your movement right now, is a, a much more easy option today than it will be once we're in this fight. Because once we're in this fight, we can't unring that bell. Unless we win, I can't recoup all the resources, finances, creative energy, and just life energy that's been invested into it. Failure is a much more easy option for me to choose today than it would be tomorrow or the next day or the next, and I know that, and I struggle with it. I'm not going to lie to you, I struggle with it all the time. There are times where I come really close to calling it and packing it in. To deny that, to lie to myself, and, and to lie to you about it for the sake of an inner, some kind of inspirational soundbite would not only be dishonest, it would cloud my judgment to the decisions that I have to make for all of us moving forward. It would also be little, by the way, the magnitude of what you've done for me. You, the listener, the viewer, for us. The truth is that you've helped us build something so impactful, so important to such a multitude of people that the walls are closing in, tempting us by providing the option of failure. That's where we are right now. Failure is a, would be a relief. Failure is an option, I'm not going to lie to you. I go a step further and say not only an option, it's a very possible outcome. That's why it's at the front of my mind. I want it to be at the front of yours. Because then we're all on the same page knowing that right now, At this moment in history, we all have a decision to make. We can choose failure right now. We can choose easy right now. And it's available. It's right there. We can choose relief. We can choose peace through failure right now. Or we can choose to go through the hard door. And this may not be as inspirational. It may not sell as many books. But I can promise you this. So long as you, all of you watching, listening, streaming, choose to go through those hard doorways, those thresholds, meaning many, Doorway after doorway after doorway. So long as you keep choosing to do that with us, I promise you so will I. You tell me, are you in? Comment, let me know. If you're in, I am. To the rest of you, fill your hands, you son of a bitch. For everyone else, there's Mug Club. Hey there, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel or hit the notification bell. Do it. Oh, wait a second. Do you hear that little... Ding! It actually didn't make a ding sound. I just did it. It happened while my mouth was doing it, and you thought it was coming from your computer. Uh, so that's fun. Also, there's some videos playing in these boxes next to me. Go watch those. You might enjoy them. You might not. I don't care.